It's the Mitch Album Show on News Talk 760 WJR. Once again from Lansing at the 20th anniversary celebration of Michigan Virtual, here's Mitch. All right, we're welcoming you back. As we're having an ongoing conversation about different elements of education and its challenges here in our state, let's talk a little bit about the future of education and innovation. Uh, we have three people who have sat down with us. Uh, we'll start with Dr. David Richards, if you would introduce yourself, and we'll work our way down. Good afternoon. I'm Dave Richards, superintendent of Fraser Public Schools. Hello, I'm Dave Campbell, superintendent of Kalamazoo Risa. Rossi Ray Taylor, former superintendent and owner of Ray Taylor and Associates. Boy, these are nice short titles compared to the people before. <laughs> these you could fit on a business card. All right, uh, let's talk about uh, new methods of delivery of instruction and why they are necessary. You heard me say in our previous segment when we were talking about this, you know, there are a lot of people listening to us who remember when they got the basic little reader and how you traced your letters and we all read Sally, Dick, and Jane and, you know, it was, it was almost a prescribed path. Now there are so many different things and, of course, Michigan Virtual and the online learning computers. Talk about how these things enhance our opportunities with kids and what are some of the challenges in dealing with them. Any of you can start and we'll just bounce it around. Well, I'll, I'll take that one. I think certainly technology closes the gap for a lot of kids. Uh, certainly students have a lot of different learning styles. And uh, the opportunity for anytime, anywhere access um, gives students that chance to not lose as much learning as they do when they go home on a, a regular basis. I would uh, take a little different course. The most important thing is the effectiveness of the practices, uh, not necessarily the newness or the innovate, innovativeness of it. Um, and so it's, it's similar to a medical model. I want my doctor to use the most effective practice for me, not necessarily the newest or, or most innovative. Well, what are the more effective practices when it comes to the new learning? And I'm presuming that means online types of things. Well, I'm, what I think the most effective practice, and this may be contrary, but uh, is a highly effective teacher every hour of the day for a student. So for a state the size of Michigan that has about a million and a half kids, we need about 100,000 outstanding educators to be with children. Now, some kids do learn well in an online environment. Some students are motivated to do that, and that works very well for them. But most students really want to develop a, a, a more personal relationship, similar to what you had. And how, how uh, well, what, what I had with the Maury and Tuesdays of Maury was exceptional, but uh, there, there was also a matter of uh, a dying professor involved. We don't want to bring that on yeah. <laughs> to, uh, to everybody. But what about, um, where are we, you know, relative, if we need 100,000, how many do we actually have? It, that's impossible for me to answer. I know we're nowhere near 100,000. I know right. there's children in this state in many urban areas and in many rural areas that don't have a teacher today, and it's May. We were hundreds short, uh, thousands short in the fall, and I'm talking about outstanding teachers. Right. I'm not talking about just a teacher, somebody filling the role or, or somebody who maybe got a certification mm -hmm. that maybe a lot of people wouldn't let teach their own children. I'm talking well, Dr. outstanding. We need outstanding teachers in every single classroom in the state. Dr. Russell Ray Taylor, do you yeah. agree? Well, yes, in part. And I think that makes the case for why we need to look at education differently. What we need from schools is much different than what we needed 20, 30 years ago. Work has changed, the environment has changed, the conditions that kids uh, come up in and that they will work in in the future have changed. So we have to be uh, agile to be able to handle that. Now to have 100,000 uh, well-qualified uh, teachers at one time, uh, that's quite a challenge. Uh, teachers take time to develop their craft as well. Uh, so having the opportunity uh, with blended learning or to augment uh, what happens in the classroom just makes it richer, makes um, teachers more able to get to the various kids that they have in their classroom. So I would say that one of the things we're finding in education is that we really need to be resource rich. That doesn't mean money rich, but resource rich, so that we can get to kids the way they come to us and take them from there to where they need to be. How much of, of, of uh, learning has become a challenge because of the very things that you're suggesting that we incorporate? The attention span of children now is, is gone. I, I mean, you know, four <laughs> seconds is an incredibly long time to hold a kid's attention. Does that almost mandate that you have to start dealing in that hyperkinetic environment in order to hold, hold the kid's attention to learn? 
a little bit, but I think you have to understand also how kids learn. Uh, too much um, hyper, being too hyperkinetic really can turn some kids off. They totally can't handle it. Hmm. So you have to be able to, a teacher has to be able to handle managing a classroom that comes at kids with different needs and is able to meet those needs. And we have to look beyond the classroom. So we have to look at all the learning environments that we can provide for kids. And again, that's where things like blended learning, online learning, uh, things that are experiential where kids get their hands on um, and really uh, get to practice what they're doing. All those things we're learning from research fit how kids think and how kids learn. And we've got to bring that to the class. I want to ask uh, uh, all of you when we come back about communication uh, because I have noticed with children and the children that I work with that we are losing the art of communicating with one another. Kids don't even know how to respond to teachers. They can respond on a screen. They can tap in their response. But in terms of even making eye contact with someone and being able to communicate thoughts, which later, of course, rolls into writing and things like that, where we find a high school kid who can write and communicate his thoughts well and not in 140 characters is becoming a big challenge. And in the workforce, you still need to be able to do that. So let's talk about that in a second. Here's a look at the traffic on 760 with Kevin O'Neill. And Traffic First is sponsored by Wine Guards. Accident in the city. It's in the center lane. East All right, continuing our conversation. So let me throw that question out there now in terms of the challenge of communicating in a world where you really can just tap in a text response. What are, what are we doing and how are we making headway in that? Well, I, I would go back to my original answer, which was uh, a highly uh, trained, outstanding teacher is going to engage with her students a lot. They're not going to be sitting in the back of the room grading papers. They're going to be engaging and they're going to be uh, organizing kids into groups so they can, can engage with each other to, to work with whatever, whatever material it is that they're learning. So I would again bring it back to we need 100,000 outstanding educators. The human resource, yeah. Yes, the human resource. Mm -hmm. You know, I think our kids, uh, they socialize very differently than we did uh, not so long ago. So the technology is a way that they leverage for, for socializing, communicating with one another. But the reality is teachers are everywhere. If you ask a student uh, where they're going to get help when they go home, generally it's YouTube or Facebook or connecting with a friend. So I think for us as educators, how do we look at our lens of learning very differently? And does our current model of school fit? our current student. And I think that's the challenge is talking through learning rather than school. How much do you feel that online learning, I mean we're here Michigan Virtual, that's really what they're, they're into. Uh, online learning can be a supplementary thing as well. It's not a substitution thing. I've been fascinated, I've gotten to know Michigan Virtual, that they have AP classes, that they have languages that you can think of. a lot of times are things that aren't even being studied in schools, and I imagine that goes all the way down to the elementary level, that a kid could come home, come home after a day at school and could be supplemented by the online thing. It's not one or the other. It can be used in a lot of different ways, and I think a good example is um, what we call blended learning. So the classroom teacher in the classroom is doing a project, has children perhaps reading, um, writing about something that they are interested in, and then they can tap into an online uh, uh, access and bring in thinking there, bring in another teacher, bring in a, another part to their project. Um, there are ways that you can, uh, teachers can access curriculum, access lesson plans, um, and other things. In addition to that, they can also get their training online so that they're not only using it to teach their students, but also to learn themselves. And so I think if we wrap that all around the child's experience, uh, that we see um, a lot more um, opportunities to learn. And, and back to your question about communications, I think that the thing that we're learning about teaching today is that we really have to get into uh, allowing students, helping students, guiding students to answer questions, to solve problems. And so one of the things that uh, teachers learn to do is that they can present a compelling problem or, or something for students to solve, and then they have to figure it out. And they lead students in doing that, so they have to go beyond 140 characters. Um, mm. They have to communicate with one another. They have to write about what they've learned and what they're seeing. Uh, that gets students engaged, rather than just that, you know, write a paper about. Um, I think we've moved beyond that with students, and then we can really uh, tap into communication. Maybe we them. should pose the question to all our students, how can we find 
100,000 really qualified teachers to teach us, you know, and then the kids can solve the problem and we can all go home, you know, you that go. would be great. I want to thank you, uh, David, David, and uh, Dr. Rossi Ray Taylor for joining us. Appreciate that. We'll uh, continue with another element of our discussions here on education from Lansing on 760 WJR. 760 WJR.